Well, welcome to today's annual general meeting of Suffolk County Council here at Worsted Park. The council is meeting in person for the first time since February 2020, the budget meeting of 2020, in accordance with the prevailing government guidance and regulations. I'm Councillor Graham Newman, Chairman of the County Council, and I'll be chairing the first part of today's meeting. The meeting's being broadcast live and is available to watch on the Council's website uh, while we are in public session. A, a recording will also be available for viewing following the meeting. Uh, the first item on today's agenda is Suffolk in Focus. So, I'm delighted to welcome Mark Penlington, a Deputy Lieutenant of Suffolk, to today's meeting. Mark supports a wide range of organisations in Suffolk, has extensive experience of working across the public and private sectors, including industry with local authorities, national and regional voluntary organisations, further and higher education, and in economic development with the local enterprise partnership. His current roles include being patron of the Greenlight Trust, chair of governors at the Royal Hospital School, Deputy Chair of the University of Suffolk, Trustee of the British Racing School in Newmarket, Chair of Trustees for the Diocese of Suffolk, non-executive Chair of CFAS in Lowestoft. Now, I first met Mark uh, when, I, when he was Chairman of the Local Enterprise Partnership. I was Cabinet Member for Roads and Transport at that time, back in 2014. At that point, we, along with many others, were developing the business case uh, for the Great Eastern Main Line modernisation, in particularly the, uh, the replacement of the entire fleet of trains. At that time, it was seen as a pretty ambitious target, but now, five or six years on, we see 1.4 billion pounds worth of brand new trains in service on our local and intercity routes. Clearly, Mark is a man that can make things happen. Mark is also responsible for promoting the Queen's of Water enterprise uh, for, to help bring well-deserved recognition for business excellence across the county. He's Deputy Lieutenant for Suffolk and is leading the team that is planning the Festival of Suffolk in 2022. So, councillors, it gives me great pleasure now to ask Mark Pendington to address us. Mark. important day with a full agenda and thank you too Graham for outing me as a secret train spotter um, <laughs> uh, we had fun and nice to have two in the room two in the room <laughs> yes I'm sure there are more we will we, we know how to spot you but uh, it, it's terrific uh, to be here uh, and uh, I, I remember those days too um, and what struck me from all the years I've spent um, treading the boards of Suffolk in various guises is the magic can happen in the county when the public and private sector work seamlessly together uh, and when uh, there's close co collaboration with the voluntary sector, charities and education. That is when things, the dial can be moved on all the things we care so deeply about here in Suffolk. But I know, as you know, uh, that this county is full to the brim of entrepreneurship, uh, innovation and ideas. It's the best place in the UK, certainly, I think, to live, to work, to learn and to visit. Uh, but we also know uh, that although it is a beautiful county, and I think there's a slide up showing some of the iconic um, views and pictures of the county, uh, they are indeed beautiful, but we all know uh, that there are a number of very serious challenges in the county and some hidden needs that I know these issues will be on your agendas for many months and years to come. Uh, but I think one of the most important things uh, is for us all to work together to recover from the horror uh, and distraction uh, and hurt of, of COVID. And, and it's really good to see everyone here. And may I, before I launch into the festival, very briefly, just say my warmest congratulations to all councillors at this first meeting, the full meeting of the, of the council following the election, whether you're here for the first time or have been returned for another term of office, uh, warmest congratulations. It's, it's marvellous uh, to know that Suffolk uh, is in the best possible hands uh, and that the issues I've been speaking about, uh, we can all work together to time, tackle and solve. Now, the Festival of Suffolk was an idea of our Lord Lieutenant, Lady Euston, 
uh, who remembers, and you'll be kind enough to her not to do the maths on this, she remembers the Festival of Britain in 1951. She remembers that, uh, as we all, some of us do, um, as a moment of great innovation and showcasing UK PLC in all its potential. Um, and we look ahead to next year, which is the platinum anniversary of the Queen's accession. 70 years, a remarkable personal achievement, but an historic moment for the UK and the Commonwealth, and I think indeed the world. And until this point, uh, we haven't, uh, there's a national um, festival of Britain happening next year, and also the Commonwealth Games are coming to uh, Birmingham. So we hope that next year the mood will be different. There'll be a feeling of relief and celebration. We will be in the mood to recover, to reset, and recharge ourselves as we look to the future with renewed confidence. And it was Lady Euston's idea to have a festival of Suffolk to complement the national celebrations. And that's the genesis of the idea. And it's not going to be uh, a festival um, that we announce grand events and say, this is where you can buy your tickets and look forward to seeing you. It is a festival we want to be for all parts of Suffolk. Whatever community you are in or where you live, whatever your geography is, whatever age you are, we want the festival to touch everyone in Suffolk so together we can recover, reset uh, and recharge. And there's two really important things. One is that not for us only to have, although it will be important for us all to see each other, get communities back together, uh, but to uh, get life back to normal. Um, there has to be, and we will have a very enjoyable uh, and great time, Suffolk always does. Uh, but there must, we feel, be a legacy. The so what moment, I call it, in the, in the county, to say we've celebrated, we've brought all communities together, so what? What is going to be the benefit of Suffolk from those activities for many years to come? So we are hoping uh, to be able to launch a, a fund of uh, over five million pounds over the next three years to help people uh, recover, reset and recharge, to begin to look at how uh, organisations can begin to recover from the hurt and trauma of COVID, to make sure we get those organisations and those people and those communities back on track. So whether next year you are celebrating Diwali or you're taking the family for a picnic to the Suffolk show, uh, or, or whether you are taking pride in the Suffolk Pride March, or going to the Beckles Carnival, or filling up the freezer at the uh, Alborough Food and Drink Festival, we want the festival to be a touch point for everyone. And we're looking to focus the festival on culture and tourism, on opportunities for young people, aspiration, jobs and skills, on enterprise, make, restoring uh, recovery growth for the, the, the world-class businesses we have here, for bringing communities back together, for improving numbers of volunteers, for the environment, basing everything we do on the, U the UN sustainable uh, targets, uh, sustainability targets, to make sure uh, that our environment is sustainable and remains as beautiful as we all know it to be. You'll probably have seen last year, for example, the Queen's Green Canopy, 700,000 trees to be planted in Suffolk uh, in the next year or two, one for every citizen in the county. So let's try and together beat that target. And then activities and well-being, getting people moving together, restoring their mental health, their physical health. So all of these things are really going to be the big focus of the festival. We're going to have a festival of the sea. We're going to have uh, Expo 22 to showcase innovation and entrepreneurship and opportunities for growth and bringing uh, good ideas to market. Uh, New Market, of course, is putting on a special race day. Uh, there's going to be a marathon and pop concerts, you name it, we're willing to try and organize it. And we're not duplicating or um, uh, competing with all of the 400 events that happen in a normal Suffolk year. We are hoping the festival will be, will be a platform for bigger fundraising, more fundraising, more activities and helping communities come back uh, together. And I do have to say, if I may, to the chief executive and to the senior team and, and staff at Endeavour House, uh, the support uh, in terms of ideas we've had from them is remarkably appreciated. So thank you very much, Nicola, for all you are doing to support, uh, to support the festival. So in a two or three weeks' time, uh, brace yourselves, you will be getting a letter inviting you to be part of the Festival of Suffolk in your divisions, in towns and parish councils, uh, to make sure that the festival uh, reflects the ideas from communities and individuals and organizations right across the county. This isn't a top-down festival, it's a bottom-up celebration. And we hope, please, in your divisions, you will be uh, happy and willing to, to help us. And we will be uh, advising and keeping you in touch every step of the way. 
And as I say, our, our goal is together we will shine a spotlight on Suffolk, opening up opportunities, connections and improvements for everyone. So I wanted to give you this uh, a tantalizing uh, uh, preview of, of, this, of the, the festival which will be formally and gradually launched in two or three weeks time because until this point as I've said it hasn't felt appropriate given the hurt of COVID and the focus quite rightly on that to us, for us to come along and be talking about a party next year but let's hope we can all have one uh, and I look forward to uh, doing all I can to support you and the festival in your divisions to make sure that it reaches the parts that festivals sometimes don't reach. So thank you for your uh, kind attention. I've appreciated these few minutes, Graham, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you on the festival and to having your support uh, in coming months. Thank you so much, and have a good meeting. Uh, well, Mark, thank you so much for your thought-provoking address. And, you know, I mentioned earlier on what I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, um, ambitious, ambition to raise £5 million just watch it be developed over the next five years, <laughs> the next three years, I'm sure it will be. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. You know you're very welcome to take a seat in the room if you would like to stay with us, or please feel free to leave uh, when you feel it's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So moving on to agenda item two, ladies and gentlemen, it's my chairman's announcements. And first, I would like to give a very warm welcome to both returning and new councillors to this first meeting of the municipal year. And may I personally congratulate everybody for their election to Suffolk County Council. Before I move on to my announcements for today, I would just like to give a few reminders about how today's meeting will run. Please can I remind you that face masks must be worn at all times unless you are addressing the meeting or if you are exempt for the specified medical reasons. Councillors wishing to speak will need to indicate to me or the monitoring officer, uh, Mr Ryder here, uh, when your name is called, please move to the nearest available lectern to, to address the meeting via the microphones. Now this is important so that you will be heard on the webcast. All the touch points will be sanitised uh, between speakers. We have a lady here ready to jump up and, and deal with that. So should we need to take a vote, this will either be a, by a show of hands or via a roll call if a recorded vote is requested or needed. Uh, thank you very much, councillors. So moving on to formal announcements now. The first really is a tribute to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Philip, uh, Duke of Edinburgh. Um, as this is the first meeting of the Council since March, I would like to pay tribute to His Royal Highness, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, who died on the 9th of April. We remember His Royal Highness with great gratitude for his long and dedicated service to our country and the Commonwealth, his support of the environment, his many innovations, most notably the Duke of Edinburgh Award, and of course his unstinting support to Her Majesty the Queen through the past seven decades. He was a man of great honour and dedication to duty, and His Royal Highness had visited Suffolk on many occasions and was held in great fondness by the people of this county. I wrote to Her Majesty the Queen expressing the County Council's sincere condolences, and many of you, I believe, will have signed the online condolence book. Um, it is with great sadness now that I must announce the death of former County Councillor Selwyn Pryor, who passed away on the 28th of March, 2021. So in was the Conservative councillor for Melford No. 2 Division, which became the Stour Valley Division from the 28th of June 1978 until he stood down on the 4th of June 2009, by which time he'd served 31 years on this county council. So in sat on a large number of committees over the years, including education, highways, social services, at police, for which he was vice chairman, policy, fire and public protection, for which he was chairman, and then in later years, public protection, scrutiny, rights of way, development control, roads and transport, and regulatory committees. And it's also with much sadness that I must announce the death of former County Councillor Kenneth Michael Cartwright. He was always known as Michael. He passed away on the 12th of April, 2021. Michael was the Labour Councillor for the Ipswich Chantry Division from the 12th of April, 1973 the first election for Suffolk County Council, until May 1977, so he served four years on the authority. 
Michael was a member of the Fire and Public Protection Committee, Planning and Transportation Committee, and Policy and Resources Committee. Sadly, I have to announce a death in service of Rosalind Johnson, who passed away on the 6th of April 2021 uh, following illness. She had a long career with the charity Bernardo's, Rosalind known as Ross. She worked for the council for just over 18 years. Most recently, she worked as a Health and Children's Centre advisor in Children's Young People Services, where colleagues described her as beautiful and kind, with a warmth that was infectious as her laugh. She was valued by both her immediate team and the wider county service, where she was a constant support to colleagues. This respect spread to many families she worked with. For a large part of her career, she was the first person families would meet, and she never failed to have a smile always going and above and beyond to be warm and welcoming, and she will be greatly missed. So I'm sure all of us councillors will join me in passing condolences to Selwyn, Michael, and Rosalind's families at this very difficult time for them. I would like to now ask you to stand for one minute in silence and to mark of respect. <laughs> So moving on, um, we have the retirement of Andy Osman, who was head of emergency planning. Andy Osman, head of emergency planning, is retiring, and his contribution to emergency planning in Suffolk County Council has been exemplary. Through his vision and drive, the Joint Emergency Planning Unit, uh, Unit Partnership was established in 2005 to support all Suffolk's councils' emergency planning arrangements and ensure that the citizens of Suffolk are protected and prepared for any crises. Particularly over this last year, that work and his role in guiding and advising Suffolk Resilience Forum's response has ensured that coordinated and effective multi-agency agreements were in place to support communities during the pandemic. He always exhibited complete professionalism. His commitment has been a shining example of public service. Christine Fogg, who was the Head of Performance, Partnership and Development in Education, Skills and Learning team, also retires from the Council in August. Christine has served the Council as an Education Specialist for 25 years. She's a Science Specialist and she's held roles including the lead for science in the National Strategies. The Council still receives royalties on the excellent textbooks she wrote as an advisor. Christine moved into school improvement work and was deployed by Ofsted as an inspector. In recent years, she has led on performance, partnerships, and the development of the education service. Christine will be greatly missed by her colleagues. Finally, I would just like to update you on the Winter Cycling Commission. And you can see there in the picture, we raised just over £6,000 for St Elizabeth Hospice. Throughout February and March, I was joined by 68 cyclists, I think 67 cyclists and me, in completing a 272-kilometre virtual mile, virtual bike ride, so virtual mile ride, um, it takes you 170 miles, that's what was confusing me, in aid of the hospice. Riders of all ages and abilities took part, and all the funds raised have been donated to the hospice, which provides free services to improve uh, life for people living with progressive or life-limiting illness throughout East Suffolk, Great Yarmouth and Waveney. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking everybody who took part and everybody who supported the mission. That now concludes my formal announcements, so we're going to move on to agenda item three. Agenda item three is apologies for absence. 
I've received apologies from absence for the following councillors, Jamie Starling, Richard Kemp, Judy Cloak, Sarah Adams. Does anyone have any further apologies for this meeting, please? Take that as a no, thank you very much. And we'll move on to agenda item four. Agenda item four is declarations of interest and dispensations. Do councillors have any interest to declare in respect of today's agenda, please? I see no hands raised, so we're going to move on to agenda item five. Agenda item five is the minutes of the last uh, meeting of the County Council held on the 18th of March, 2021. If any councillor wishes to comment on those minutes, please indicate to the monitoring officer that you wish to speak. But if there are no comments, I will take it that those of us who were present are content to approve the minutes as a correct record. Again, I see no hands raised, so thank you councillors, and we can move on to agenda item six. Agenda item six is election of chairman for 2021-22. Uh, following the election, the chairman will make the declaration of acceptance of office. I'm now going to ask the monitor of, monitoring officer to invite nominations, please. Yes. Are there any nominations for the chairman of the council, please, for the period to May 2022? Councillor Spicer? Would you like to go to the lectern? Thank you very much. Um, members, it's a great honour today to be coming to this lectern to propose that Graham Newman be elected as our chairman for the forthcoming municipal year. I'm very honoured actually to be the first person to speak officially other than the chairman to, to members, both those newly re-elected and those newly elected welcome to our council. I hope I'm one of every councillor here that would also want to commend County Council staff and the staff here at Worsted for all the arrangements that have been made for us to meet here today. Now usually, colleagues, at the annual meeting of this council every May, the person who's honoured to rise to propose the next chairman starts off by praising the outgoing chairman and all their achievements. However, this is a bit different this time. As the former council has had the privilege of Graham Newman as chairman since last October, so we know what we're getting. Those of us that have served in the previous council and have been re-elected know that he's competent, fair, fit, hard-working. Now I need a word of warning here because Graham has actually, warning to all of you, uh, Graham has actually chaired the last four meetings this is your fourth, third meet, three meetings, um, uh, virtually. Now, one of the things those of you that have got familiar with Teams will know is that you do see the chairman full on, close up. <laughs> the whole meeting, they're half your screen usually, which doesn't leave much time. And we've seen Graham full on for long hours. The last one meeting was well over four hours. Now, I must warn you, this is a word of warning, that if you re-elect him, he's quite trigger-happy with the warning bell. And I have watched his hand hovering with excitement at the thought that he might be able to ring the bell. <laughs> so I bought that. And may I say, Councillor Newman, if you try ringing it on me, you will find nobody's nominated you today. <laughs> um, now, we have actually got 30 new councillors here today. So let me just tell you a little bit about Graham. He was first elected to this council in 2005, but he was already well established in public life then and in Felixstowe where he was already on the town council. He has in fact had two terms of office as mayor of Felixstowe and he's a terrific champion for Felixstowe as a town, as a, a holiday destination, um, as a resort and importantly the port of Felixstowe. And having run a successful business himself right across East Anglia, he's brought to this council um, over the last years some considerably uh, valuable experience. 
On the Council, Graham's held many important and useful positions. Um, as he's reminded us, he was being Cabinet Member for Highways, but also Cabinet Member at different times for Education and for Adult Social Care. He's chaired different scrutiny committees, and over the last few years, he's developed a reputation as being valuable and sensible, chairing and sensitive, chairing our Education Transport Appeals Committee. Now, for those of you that have served with him, um, that actually involves getting up at dawn or before dawn in order to get all over the county to walk the school routes that are under discussion, walking to school routes, checking them for safety and suitability. When we all get to be able to talk more informally, he will tell you stories of navigating cowpat, ditches, slippery banks, and a few other hazards along the way. But he's also going to be quite a useful chairman to you all because he's a fount of information on public transport. So when you find yourself stuck in Endeavour House, don't think about ringing Alexa or a helpline, just ask Graham. He will tell you every train or timetable option and whether you want to get to Brandon, Haverhill, I or Lowestoft. He has the answers. So, councillors, half of us here know what an excellent chairman Graham Newman will be. But I have no hesitation in rep rep recommending him to new members to support him today. In addition to chairing our meetings with good humour and fairness, we also know and can be confident that he will represent us at civic events and ceremonies right across Suffolk. And we do hope that they will resume properly soon and he will make us proud. So colleagues, I'd like to formally propose that Councillor Graham Newman be elected chairman of this council for the forthcoming municipal year. Thank you, Councillor Spicer. Is there a seconder, please? Councillor Fleming. Well, good afternoon, everybody, new and old in this room. I am more than happy and honoured to second Councillor Joanna Spicer's nomination of Graham Newman for Chairman of this Council. Councillor Spicer is always a hard act to follow, so I feel very challenged in adding to her commendations. <clears throat> but I will echo her thanks to the Council staff and especially to democratic services and IT over the past year, you've performed nothing short of a miracle for us, so thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, Councillor Spicer has been a councillor since 1989, <clears throat> while Councillor Newman is a relative newcomer, having entered county politics in 2005. And I'm a baby, as first selected in 2013. But perhaps what this means is that within this administration, we have a lot of years of experience at hand to draw upon <clears throat> for whatever comes over the, over the next administration. When I was first elected, Councillor Newman was cabinet member for roads and highways, or roads and transport, as I think it was called at the time at a rather difficult time for the, <clears throat> for the Council as the highways contract had just been assigned to Keir May Gurney, now um, known as Suffolk Highways. <clears throat> Poor Graham was on the news and radio all the time at Mark Murphy's mercy trying to explain why potholes had suddenly proliferated, why Ipswich was at a standstill and why things never seemed to be quite what they should be, as everyone who has held this noble office is familiar. <clears throat> However, over time, I have come to gain a new understanding of Graham and his keen interest in things that matter, like in this instant, transport. Now, getting around is a key issue for Graham, and he rides a bike. I was very impressed to learn that he rode it from Felixstowe to Endeavour House almost every day in all but the very worst weather, often arriving soaking wet in a sports outfit and helmet, 
and looking very svelte, but soon rapidly transformed by a suit and tie. It must have been a couple of years later that I realized that his bike has supplementary battery power. <laughs> I really had to take stock of Graham then and question my admiration of him, but it has borne up. Graham is a fantastic, dedicated, hardworking and imaginative man. We are very fortunate to have him in our midst today. His judgment, good standing and integrity are a credit to him and I believe a reflection of this council and make him the most fitting representative. It gives me enormous pleasure to second his nomination, nomination as chairman of Suffolk County Council for the coming year. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Are there any other nominations? So, unless any councillor indicates otherwise, I will take it that council is content to agree the nomination by general affirmation. So, therefore, Councillor Graham Newman is duly elected as chairman of the County Council for the period to the next AGM. Congratulations, Graham, and I'll hand over to you to resume the chair and to read and sign your declaration of office, please. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Tim. That's very nice. Um, I will now read the Declaration of Acceptance of Office. I, Graham Newman, having been elected to the office of Chairman of the Council, hereby declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to be guided by the Council's code of conduct in the performance of my functions of that office. I'm now going to sign this document. Well, good afternoon again, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. It's a huge privilege to be asked to continue as your chairman, hopefully this time round for a full year rather than just seven months. Uh, but I must first thank uh, Councillor Joanna Spicer for nominating me and uh, indeed Councillor Jessica Fleming for seconding me. Uh, this very generous speech. I thought she was going to mention something terrible about having seen me in, in very close view on teams on meeting after meeting. Thankfully, that didn't actually appear. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm very conscious of ticks and things like that. You move your head so much, you know, and, you, and I, I was looking on the YouTube on a playback and thinking to myself, I've really got to try and hold my head still. Uh, you must be feeling like um, you're, you're out with a trip with Noddy or something. Anyway, thank you all for voting in favour. Uh, whilst those who were here in the last term will know exactly what they're going to get, um, that's a huge leap of faith for our 31 new councillors, actually 31 because uh, good old Sandy Martin there for, for the Labour group has, uh, has come back to us from other pastures. In a funny kind of way, I quite enjoyed chairing meetings on teams, in particular the budget meeting, which as a result of the COVID regulations that were in place at the time, I was obliged to conduct from home. Fortunately, I was able to set up a nice area um, free of background interference. I was very well equipped by it from our IT team uh, with two screens and an independent WhatsApp link to Chief Executive and the Monitoring Officer. I even had my own timer and my own bell, you'll be pleased to know, uh, Councillor Spicer. Thankfully, we had no major hiccups during those sessions other than the team's unpredictable propensity not to lower hands when people have finished speaking. So then it made it very difficult to call the next speakers in the right order, but we got over that with a something which IT sent to us called a, a cage clearance, I believe. However, conducting council meetings was one of the few highlights, really, of my, my first term as chairman, as, of course, there were barely any chances to represent you physically at civic functions and activities. Um, just the Remembrance Commemorations in Abbey Gardens on the, on the Saturday and Christchurch Park on Remembrance Sunday, all very socially distanced. And more recently, at the service of commemoration for the passing of the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, which was held in St Edmundsbury Cathedral. 
On the other hand, as I mentioned earlier, one of my great successes of my term was, of course, the winter cycling mission in aid of St. Um, Elizabeth Hospice, of which I've already spoken. Now, for 21-22, I've yet to finally decide on a charity to support. I'm actually looking for suggestions from councillors and our officers as to charities they would like to see supported. Uh, for my part, ideally the charity should be operating right across or over the majority of the county, be supporting people suffering from illness or disability or difficulties arising from the pandemic, and also have their own fundraising team capable of supporting and publicising our fundraising endeavours. So if you have a charity in mind, uh, please could I ask you to contact through chairman at suffolk.gov.uk, that's uh, my email address for chairman's business, chairman at suffolk.gov.uk, by Friday the 11th of June, so that's a fortnight and a day from today. I will announce the selected charity by email and confirm it at the next meeting of the council on the 8th of July. Now, councillors, I believe we face unprecedented challenges in this coming four-year term as we recover and rebuild from the impacts of COVID. The economic consequences of the past 15 months of lockdowns and restrictions, I don't think the full implications of those are fully understood as yet, both in financial terms and mental health terms. A huge challenge to our residents, their children, their business interests. That's quite apart from those who've sadly lost lives or loved ones or suffered long-term damage to their physical health. Residents are going to be looking to us for support, answers, prudent use of resources, timely responses to their calls for help. But you know, when you look back on the past 15 months, I believe we can say with confidence that this authority and its councillors, irrespective of their party allegiance, and our hugely professional officer team are more than capable of rising to that next challenge. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, I'd like to move on now to the election of a vice chairman. Uh, following the election, the new vice chairman will make a declaration of acceptance of office. Do I have any nominations, please, for the vice chairman of the council? Do I see there, Councillor David Roach, please? Would you like to come to a lectern and uh, make your proposal? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As per your instructions, I've come to the nearest lectern. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on you becoming chairman of this wonderful county council of ours. And congratulations to all our new and returning members on your elections. Isn't it good to be back to having a face-to-face -face meeting? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I think we will, we will miss in a face-to-face -face meeting is the term, you're muted. Although perhaps we might have a desire to have muting, I don't know. But uh, on to Robert. I have great pleasure in nominating Councillor Robert Everett for the role of Vice Chair for our wonderful council, County Council. And I have known Robert for a number of years and can tell you that he is suitably qualified for this role. He's a gentleman of the first order and he quietly gets on with the job. And I think there's an analogy that fits quite well for Robert, and it's this. It's like a swan, it looks like he's floating serenely by, but if you look carefully, you can see just how hard he is working to get the job done whilst making it look effortless. Back in the midst of time, Robert became a parish councillor in Wickenbrook, and this confirmed to him, and he already knew this, I think, that the more you put into your community, the more you get out. So he started organising events in the village, which included firework displays, and then later the displays in Bury St Edmunds. Robert then progressed to becoming a St Edmundsbury Borough Councillor back in 2003, and continues to be a West Suffolk Councillor after the merging of St Edmundsbury and Forest Heath. So that's some 18 years of service. Robert became the Mayor of St Edmundsbury in 2014, and of course the Mayor in St Edmundsbury as it was, chairs the Borough Council, so that you can see this does qualify him for the nomination. His preferred mode of transport, like our current chairman, is the bicycle, and he can often be seen pedalling around Bury. and perhaps we should be thinking about a corporate logo for our chairman and vice chairman's bikes. Perhaps that might be a good thing, or, or not. 
So I haven't really got pages and pages of this, honestly. I shall be, I shall be relatively brief. So Robert does like to be involved, and his civic duties are long and distinguished and some of which as serving as a non-direct executive director for Havebury Housing for nine years, chair of the Organ Donation Committee at West Suffolk Hospital, and trustee of the Royal Anglican Regiment Keep, and a key organiser of the famous Berry Christmas Fair. There are loads more that he does, so he really, really does put his all into his community. Robert also sits on West Suffolk Cabinet as the portfolio holder for families and communities, and works to support that arm of the council with all of the challenges that we know that portfolio can bring. So, Robert, from one ex round table to another, and you may hear some more about that, I think you'll make an excellent vice chairman, and later, with luck and skill and judgment of this council, you'll go on to be a chair. So, Mr Chairman, I move the nomination and ask for the full support of this council to elect Robert as your vice chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Roach. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Becky Hoppensberger would like to come to a lectern. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And may I add my congratulations to those who've already received your reappointment. Hope this year is a bit more of a normal year for you and as Chairman and just as successful as your previous one. Colleagues, it gives me great pleasure to second Robert Everett as Vice Chairman of the Council. Looking around the room, I've most probably known Robert for the longest time, which can sometimes be a good or a bad thing, but don't worry, Robert, I will be nice. Joking aside, I've always been impressed with Robert's sense of community involvement. I wanted to be involved in shaping, helping, supporting the communities and groups he's involved in, with a real sense of purpose, commitment, and always with a sense of humour and a smile on his face. He has a genuine aim of improving people's lives. I first met Robert when he was a member of Bury St Edmunds Round Table, along with my husband Paul. True to form, he was fully involved from the get-go, helping arrange successful community events on an annual basis, such as Bury St Edmunds Carnival and fireworks displays, working with different groups of volunteers, not only to stage spectacular events, but also raising lots of money for charity in the process. Again, his commitment to the cause was evident, belonging to the group for 10 years and being elected as its chairman was recognition of his passion and dedication to the group. There is no more of a testament to his dedication to the groups he's involved in than his 20 years as a school governor at St Louis Middle School in Bury St Edmunds. That's an impressive commitment in anyone's books. It was during his time at St Louis that Robert found his love of skiing. Having helped organise and escort pupils on the annual skiing trips, he learned to ski, and in his own words, at the grand old age of 45, and being 45 myself, I actually think that's still quite young, but there we go. He was impassioned to be involved in the activities provide, to provide children with opportunities to experience trips which they may not have otherwise had the opportunity to do so. When times allow, Robert not only, when Robert's not on the ski slope, you'll find him in Sweden, visiting his three of his wonderful grandchildren, he has another two grandchildren, which are a little closer to home here in England. Never want to miss an opportunity to learn and pass on ideas on how to improve services for the community. Robert could often be seen taking notes on the Swedish public transport system, especially its bus service. So just as a heads up to the new cabinet member for um, highways, it's worth noting in your diary when Robert makes a trip to Sweden, because you can bet you'll be contacted by a very excited and inspired Robert, providing you of ideas on what we can do here in Suffolk. Mr Chairman, colleagues, I could go on talking about Robert's work within the communities he's part of, and I haven't even touched on his work as a councillor, as David has so eloquently talked about in his nomination speech. But I hope I've demonstrated what I believe vice, the Vice Chairman's role of Suffolk County Council is so suited to Robert. He'll carry out his role with passion, dedication, and with a smile on his face. It therefore gives me great pleasure to second the nomination of Robert Everett for Vice Chairman of Suffolk County Council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Hoffensberger. Are there any other nominations, please? 
I see no hands raised, so I take it that the Council is content to agree that nomination by general affirmation. Agreed? Are there any objectors? I see no hands. Lovely. Um, as there are no requests to speak, it with much pleasure that I announce Councillor Robert Everett, duly elected as Vice Chairman of the County Council for the period to May 2022. Um, Councillor Everett, can I ask you please to join us at the dais here to receive your badge of office and read out and sign the Declaration of Office. I'd read it first and then, uh, and then put it on. <laughs> um, so my declaration of acceptance to Vice Chairman, I, Robert Everett, having been elected to the office of Vice Chairman of the Council, hereby declare that I take the, that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfill the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and abilities. I undertake to be guided by the council's code of conduct in the performance of my functions in that office. I will now sign, thank you. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, fellow councillors, uh, thank you all very much indeed for your support. And I my thank David, David Roach for that um, rather becoming of you anyway, uh, address. And thank you, Becky, for those kind words about um, what I do and, and my, my uh, family and commitments to doing the role of vice chairman. So it's a bit like Christmas. I've not actually seen this yet, so do you mind if I open it just to have a little look? <laughs> very impressive. Thank you very much. I will wear that with pride, I promise you. So um, I've just made a few brief notes, and I just want to say, um, indeed, thank you, Councillor Roach, and thank you, Councillor Hoffensberger, for those very kind words. Um, when you hear them spoken out loud like that, I feel somewhat embarrassed that uh, my life has taken the route that it has. But I did learn very early on in life that uh, you do, and as I'm sure you would uh, agree, get out of life what you put into it. And certainly as a counsellor, that is so very true. Um, and and I, I, for those new councillors that have just joined us for this term, um, I wish you well. And I'm sure that you'll do a, a, an amazing job for your residents. The reason you've put yourself forward is because you want to do the best for your residents. So um, I wish you, as I say, I wish you well. Um, and I hope to be doing a, a, a fair job for everybody, no matter what your political persuasion. Uh, as, as Graham has done in the past year, or 15 months that you've been doing the job, um, Graham has always shown fairness when he comes to um, running the meetings, and I will endeavour to do exactly as he's done. So I think that's probably all I need to say now. Thank you all very much indeed. I will now go and sit down and enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Everett. So we're going to move on now to Agenda Item 8. Agenda Item 8 is the election of the leader of Suffolk County Council until the annual meeting in 2025. Do I have any nominations for the leader of the council, please? Councillor Richard Rout, please take your place at the lectern. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I'd like to join others in congratulating you on your re-election as Chairman of Suffolk County Council. You've done a remarkable job guiding us through our online meetings, and it's fantastic to finally see you in your chains of office in person. Also, of course, my congratulations to um, your new Vice Chairman, my friend and colleague from the west of the county, Councillor Everett. Moving on, it will come as no surprise that I would like to propose Councillor Matthew Hicks as leader of this county council. Matthew has been our leader since 2018, taking us forward as one county on a positive and forward-thinking platform. 
His leadership has been an inspiration to me and to many others. The level of personal responsibility that Matthew takes on his shoulders, always when times allow in Endeavour House, and always with his door wide open to our group and indeed any political party. His leadership is inclusive, but forthright and decisive. And his is a, a vision that has clearly resonated across Suffolk, leading the Conservatives to our best election results since 1977, standing on a manifesto brimming with ambition for our communities, business and environment. Mr Chairman, I think a little more must be said about the leadership Matthew has provided these last 18 months. In the darkest of times, you see the true depth of someone's character and their leadership skills are truly, truly put under the microscope. I'm not the first to use the word unprecedented today, but Matthew has led us through a pandemic unprecedented in modern times. And with that comes unprecedented pressure and accountability. He, and through his leadership, this county council, stepped up to stand with Suffolk through COVID-19. He convened daily informal cabinet briefings, chaired the local outbreak engagement board, attended at least weekly ministerial briefings, kept our ministers, uh, our MPs, councillors frequently updated, coordinated with our chief executive, Nicola Beach, Suffolk's overall response to this pandemic. But importantly, with our Director of Public Health, Stuart Keeble, Matthew gave Suffolk's response to the pandemic a public face, conducting just under 50 broadcast interviews, calmly guiding and reassuring our communities through these most testing times. It has been an honour to work alongside Matthew since my election in 2017. Not only has he delivered nigh on record-breaking political success for our party, but moreover, our county has been fortunate to have someone of his calibre at the helm when COVID-19 struck. I can think of nobody better to lead Suffolk out of this pandemic and through recovery to a brighter future for everyone who lives here. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Rout. Do I have a seconder, please? Yeah. Councillor Rivett, please do come forward to a lectern and uh, second the proposal, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman, and may I too congratulate you on your re-election today, and I'm delighted to see Councillor Everett equally at your side as Vice Chairman. It gives me great pleasure to second the nomination of Councillor Matthew Hicks as leader of the County Council. As Councillor Rout has said, Matthew has been a leader for all of Suffolk. As an East Suffolk man, I have seen at first hand Matthew's drive to improve the economy, environment and quality of life across the county. Only last Friday, in Lowestoft, the flood defence work continued with the groundbreaking ceremony for the Tidal Barrier, a transformative project that will further protect Lowestoft now and in the future. I know colleagues across the county will also be able to speak of their own examples of Matthew's drive and ambition for their parts of the county. It's fantastic to see 55 councillors in this chamber, a record equaling number and our best result since 1977. The electoral success is a reflection of a manifesto, but also Matthew, that speaks to all of Suffolk, and I am confident that no one else amongst us could have delivered such a resounding electoral success. The results Matthew led us to are not only record equaling, but also outperformed all other county councils in the east of England. This wasn't just a national swing, it was a resounding endorsement of Matthew's leadership and our conservative message here in Suffolk. Like Councillor Rout, I want to dwell for a moment on these last 18 months. As deputy leader of another council, I too have seen and experienced the level of pressure and daily demand that must be placed on Matthew's shoulders. Along with the chief executive, it has been Matthew who has led the county's response to the pandemic and in times like this, it is important that this county has visible, compassionate, clear, and moreover, decisive leadership. Matthew has provided this in spades, making difficult decisions in challenging times with the best interests of Suffolk at his core. 
These next four years will bring challenges as Suffolk recovers from COVID-19. We need a leader whose eye is firmly on Suffolk, whose door is always open, who will treat everyone, regardless of politics, with compassion and respect. We need a leader whose vision for Suffolk is clear and decisive, leaving nobody behind. I know that Matthew Hicks is the ideal man for the job, and it is an honour to second his nomination. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Rivett. Are there any other nominations, please? I will take it then, Councillor is content to agree the nomination by general affirmation, unless any Councillor indicates otherwise. There are no requests to speak, so I therefore with much pleasure announce that Councillor Matthew Hicks is duly elected as the leader of Suffolk County Council until the AGM meeting in 2025. Uh, congratulations, Councillor Hicks. <laughs> and that brings us seamlessly on to agenda item nine, uh, which is the executive statement. The leader of the council has 20 minutes to address the council, after which time I will invite representative of each of the other political groups to respond for up to seven minutes. I therefore invite Councillor Matthew Hicks uh, to make his statement, please. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And firstly, I'd like to congratulate you and the Vice Chairman and wish you both a very successful year. I would just like to say how good it is to be back together as a council in a chamber, maybe not a familiar chamber, but at least together in a space. Mr. Chairman, we have just experienced an election like no other. Whilst this was a very different election, actually, in the end, it was nice to be outside again, to walk through our communities and speak to our residents. My thanks go to all those that made the elections possible and that they were carried out so safely. We have seen COVID-19 disrupt every part of our lives, from the way we work and the way we interact. And I want to just take a moment to remember those that we have lost since March last year. To all those who have lost a loved one, I offer my sincere condolences and sympathies. I promise that their memories will not be forgotten. Our plans for healing woods will, I hope, help the healing process for all those that suffer the pain of grief. Mr. Chairman, I have worked alongside some of the most committed people, all determined to do their best to protect us from COVID-19. And I really would just like to take this opportunity to thank our staff, led by the Chief Executive Nicola Beach, for the huge commitment that has been shown and to acknowledge those again who have been on the front line working tirelessly to deliver our services in the most challenging of times. I also need to highlight the incredible success of the vaccine rollout across Suffolk. The vaccine continues to represent hope for all of us. And I want to pay tribute to all those that have been involved Thank you. In these darkest of times, we have seen the very best of Suffolk. The spirit of us all, in this together, one county, all of us, supporting each other. Long may this spirit of togetherness continue. Mr. Chairman, my administration's unwavering objective for Suffolk over the next four years is to build back better, build back stronger, and build back greener. During the election, we took our four-pillar promise to the people of Suffolk to prioritize Suffolk's vulnerable residents, to strengthen Suffolk's economy, to protect and enhance Suffolk's environment, and to deliver real value for money for the Suffolk taxpayer. And I now just want to talk about each of these. 
Now, during the pandemic, my partner and I invited my elderly mother to live with us full time, and it did give me a first hand appreciation of the importance and difficulties of caring for a vulnerable person. And the reality is, by 2031, a fifth of Suffolk's residents will be aged over 80, and we must be prepared for that. We will harness new technology, like we did when we supported the Digital Care Phone project last year. We will also continue our unwavering support for our fantastic care workers, who do so much to make sure people get the care and the support they need. Since 2017, we have spent over £1 billion on caring for vulnerable residents. This huge level of support will continue. But our promise goes beyond just adults and the elderly. We're already investing £45 million in over 800 school places for those with special educational needs. And working with our partners, we will drive up educational standards through a project led by the National Literacy Trust. And we'll, we, we'll, sorry, we will create family hubs. Our Children and Young People's Services was recently rated outstanding by Ofsted, a huge achievement. And we will work hard to maintain that rating. Mr. Chairman, we will prioritize Suffolk's vulnerable residents. Now, as Suffolk's economy begins to recover from the pandemic, I think we must all accept that things are not the same as they were before. We must use this as an opportunity to build an economy which is better suited to the challenges for the next 30 years. An economy which embraces greener technology that invites investment in the right training and skills and benefits everyone equally. We've got some good news, a free port in Suffolk, a major gateway to the world for an outward looking global Britain. And I'm confident that new business will take advantage of the special customs and tax rules which free ports offer. And companies will come and base themselves here in Suffolk, creating new jobs and new opportunities. And of course, I can't talk about the economy without speaking about the new landmark for Suffolk, the Gull Wing. We made a promise to the people of Lower Stoft that we would build a third crossing in the town. And this administration is delivering on that promise. Mr. Chairman, we invested more than £207 million in our road network over the last four years, including resurfacing 1,000 miles of Suffolk's highways. And we are going to launch a £20 million programme to spend £10 million tackling highways flooding and a further £10 million improving and upgrading 500 miles of footpaths and pavements across the county. And finally, the pandemic showed us that we need really good, faster broadband connectivity. So we will work with central government and industry partners to achieve full digital connectivity for Suffolk. Mr. Chairman, we will strengthen Suffolk's economy. Now, the message from the public is clear. Environmental issues do matter to them, as do jobs, as does housing, as does infrastructure, as does improving the quality of life. And this is a good thing, and it's in keeping with the views of the Conservative Party. We will place the environment at the forefront of the agenda, an agenda the Conservatives will set and we will lead on. In 2019, this council declared a climate emergency. And we've been working hard to become a carbon neutral authority by 2030. Now, to highlight everything we're doing, I could use up my full time, but I think we'd like to, I'd like to mention the recent launch of the first fully electric community bus, the rollout of electric vehicles at Suffolk County Council, as we take the greenest county to new levels. And on top of this, we have three million that's being uh, rolled out to improve council offices, fire stations and schools, heating systems. And we're investing 14 and a half million pounds in upgraded and new recycling centers in Suffolk. And we will continue to focus on promoting greater biodiversity. We, the Conservatives, will deliver an environmentally sustainable and economically successful Suffolk.
Now, we recognize the role Suffolk has to play in ensuring the nation's energy supply. Upwards of a third of the nation's energy may soon be routed through Suffolk. We support this investment, but it must not come at any cost to our communities or our unique natural environment. We will continue to lead this fight and push for a coordinated approach to energy projects and potential solutions like the offshore transmission technologies. We are fully committed. We will protect and enhance Suffolk's environment. Now, when there is only so much money to spend, you have to make choices, Margaret Thatcher said in 1983. And it was true then as it is today. Over the last 10 years, we have heard time and time again from the opposition that we should fund services from reserves or spend every penny or actually have no reserves at all. Had we taken that approach, this council would not have survived the last 12 months. Mr. Chairman, it is the people of Suffolk who would have suffered. Now, due to our financial prudence, when the pandemic hit last year, we were in a really strong position to not only keep vital services going, but to invest in services further. We have done all of this and more without having to put council tax up to the maximum amount, as suggested by those now in opposition. We commit to support, to strengthen, to protect, to deliver, never taking more money than what we need. Because let me stress this point, it is not our money. It is the hard-earned money taken from the people of Suffolk, and we must treat it as such. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we will continue to deliver real value for money for the Suffolk taxpayer. Now, I prefer to watch football that attacks the ball and not the player. Uh, it does happen at Arsenal now. Um, this is an approach that we actually on the Conservative benches under my leadership will take into the council chamber. We will always call out policies that are economically dangerous, that gloss over hidden left-wing agendas, that put the good people of Suffolk at risk. But we will never, never attack individuals. We will raise the level of debate in this chamber and not make people grimace at clumsy personal attacks. Mr. Chairman, since I've been leader of this council, we, the Conservatives, have set out a positive, forward-thinking agenda. And this is an approach we put in our manifesto, a positive document focused on this, focused on the county's recovery and building back from the pandemic, and it clearly resonated very well with the people of Suffolk. And this is in stark contrast to the Labour manifesto, full of uncosted promises, a manifesto that mentioned the Conservative Party 23 times. This negativity has been poorly received by the electorate. Opposition for opposition's sake is disappointing, and Suffolk has clearly spoken. Now, I'm so pleased to today welcome our dynamic new intake from Ipswich to this council. It is... It is a positive new dawn for Ipswich and the town, working alongside the town's MP, Tom Hunt. And I really look forward to the Borough Council returning to Conservative control in the near future. <laughs> Together, we can deliver even more for our county town, and Ipswich has put its faith in us, and we will repay that faith. Now, moving to our new opposition, I offer the Green Party my congratulations. Their party made some gains across the country at the expense of Labour, and this was to an extent reflected here in Suffolk. But on the one hand, it reflects how right we have been to place the environment so high on our agenda. But let's be clear that our environmental policies do not come at the expense of the economy. We can support infrastructure, we can support growth, we can support new business, and at the same time, safeguard our environment. Applause 
Now, this is a different approach to the Green Party, who want to cancel road building programs, oppose the free port, ban the advertising of alcohol, and this is an industry that creates so many jobs in Suffolk for Green King, Adnams, and Aspals. They want to introduce a land value tax that will rob many families of handing their hard-earned assets to their children. Mr. Chairman, there is a clear blue water between our two parties. And we on the Conservative benches will set the environmental agenda while safeguarding our economy. The Conservative Party fielded candidates in every seat. We did not need deals with other parties to succeed because we are confident in our own manifesto. These are the best sets of results since 1977. It's a clear mandate from Suffolk and we will deliver. Now, following the election, I'm proud to say that of the councillors who were elected, 39% of them are women. And all of the women elected on this side of the chamber four years ago in 2017 or before have taken senior roles in this administration. We also have, to the best of my research, the youngest county councillor in England. I have absolutely no doubt that this council is a better council the more it reflects the communities that we represent, and I hope that will continue. Now, I'd like to move on and announce my cabinet. Uh, the deputy leader and cabinet member for finance and the environment is Richard Rout. The cabinet member for adult care is Becky Hofsenberger. The cabinet member for children and young people's services is James Reader. The cabinet member for education senders skills is Rachel Hood. The cabinet member for economic development, transport strategy and waste is Richard Smith. The cabinet member for Ipswich, operational highways and flooding is Paul West. And the cabinet member for public health, public protection and communities is Andrew Reid. And the deputy cabinet members are for fostering and adoption, Stephen Burrows. For cabinet, deputy cabinet member for highways, drainage is Steve Wiles. For property is Craig Rivett. For protected landscapes and archaeology is Melanie Vigo de Galladoro. The uh, Deputy Cabinet Member for SEND is Chris Chambers. And the Deputy Cabinet Member for Transport Strategy is Alexander Nicol. And I'd just like to also thank Jenny Sarisa, Jessica Fleming, Michael Ladd, Graham Newman, Karen Soons, and Joanna Spicer for chairing the main committees of this council. Thank you. Now, I'd just like to take the opportunity to elaborate briefly on the rationale around some of these new posts. First, we have a new combination of finance and the environment, and this, for the first time, puts an even playing field and reflects the fact that we now publish a carbon budget alongside a financial budget. Adult care has an excellent track record, and I'm really delighted that Bexy Hofsenberger is back in that role. Next, I've chosen to separate operational and strategic highways into two roles. Over all my years uh, as a councillor, operational highways issues do dominate our inboxes, and we have made significant improvements, but we will do more. Under Paul West, a new focus will be placed on addressing those issues that frustrate us. But keeping the portfolio for Ipswich means that our county town remains at the heart of decision making. I'm also delighted to welcome Richard Smith back to Cabinet. We have missed his eloquent contributions, and I know he will ensure that transport strategy agenda moves lockstep with our approach on infrastructure and growth. I'd also like to highlight the importance of children and young people to this administration. I've now created two Cabinet portfolios, one of children's services and one of education, send and skills. And I'd like to welcome Rachel Hood to the Cabinet to work side alongside James Reader. And finally, by placing public health, public protection and communities together, which includes our highly regarded fire and rescue service, Andrew Reed will be able to ensure that those areas that have actually worked so closely together during the pandemic continue to do so. Mr. Chairman, I very much hope we are less than one month away 
from lifting the COVID restrictions. While this moment we hope represents an end to the misery of COVID-19, I hope it also marks a beginning of a new post-pandemic world, a new way of life which will present its own challenges and opportunities. Suffolk must be ready to face them head on. We will not stumble back and carry on as if nothing has happened. We will learn from some of the new ways of working that have emerged over the last 18 months. With this strengthened conservative administration, we can build back better, we must build back greener, and we will build back stronger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Hicks. I now invite a response on behalf of the Green, Liberal Democrat and Independent Group uh, from Councillor Andrew Stringer. Uh, you've got seven minutes to respond, please, Councillor Stringer, if you'll come to a lectern. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and may I congratulate you on becoming a Chairman Again, uh, I look forward to our group working along with you. Uh, how great it is to be with you all today in the same room and not as a digital code. I would like to start by thanking all of our officers, councillors past and present, whether county, district or parish, for continuing to deliver local government services, including elections, through the most demanding of times. I would also like to pay tribute to the people of Suffolk for their patience and their resilience shown during the various lockdowns. But the biggest thank you of all must go to our NHS staff, our care workers, teachers, and to all the volunteers that have helped with prescription collection, helping at vaccination centers, getting people to medical appointments, shopping, and for simply just calling on neighbors to say hello. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. As, as we begin to relax some of the restrictions on our way of life, we are sometimes reminded with a jolt how many have been lost and those that have put themselves in the front line. For those of you that know me beyond my council work, uh, you'll know I'm a little bit of a self-builder in my spare time. Uh, and the, the other week, a, a skip was delivered. Uh, we have one occasionally. Uh, and I normally help the driver safely back in the lorry and unload the skip. As it was then lowered, I stepped forward to uncouple the chains from the back of the skip to give the driver a, a hand. Uh, and he shouted at me not to touch the chains. Do not touch the chains. He came roaring out of his lorry. And I said, well, I'm, I'm sorry, why? I, I normally help you do it. And he reminded me that, that that company picks up mattresses from residential care homes. And the chains would have been in contact with those mattresses. That was a chilling reminder of how much the pandemic has, has eaten into the very fabric of our lives. Uh, and it's still with us. Uh, I would also like to put on record uh, my thanks uh, to all those people in Suffolk that 21 days ago trebled the amount of Green Councillors in Suffolk. They trebled the amount of residents that will have the raising of their day-to-day -day issues and aspirations entrusted to us. Trebling the amount of people that have lent us their vote to become their community champions trebling the amount of trust placed in us to help steer the direction of Suffolk's future and allow even more of us to progressively work with others and get the very best for our residents. When the administration announced the aspiration to make Suffolk the greenest county, I don't believe you were thinking that would be the outcome. Uh, the past work we have done with our Lib Dem and independent colleagues have also helped to achieve this really significant result, showing there's a hunger in Suffolk for political representation that falls outside of the two main parties. We in the GLI group are fully committed to working jointly with, without party political divisions, and we're pulling together as the second largest group on Suffolk County Council. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate you personally, Matthew, on your re-election as leader, and to your party for securing almost three quarters of the seats in this chamber with just less than half the popular vote. 
I will resist the urge to overanalyze the recent election. But national media coverage of local elections normally follows a familiar pattern. This election will be a test of Boris Johnson, Keir Starmer, insert your national leader of choice. The coverage of local elections then ends up circa 24 hours later with a worse for wear presenter suggesting that a clear picture is hard to define because a lot of, lot of local issues have somehow got in the way of national political agendas. Quite right too. That's exactly what elections should be about here in Suffolk. Local issues should be the predominant factor in all elections. Local, ele local issues like, will our children get the best start in life? Local issues like, who will get the potholes filled most efficiently? Local issues like, how will our adult social care be funded? Local issues on how will we lead the way and respond to our declared climate emergency. Our group will be following on from our work in the last term, where we've brought people together with differing views, but basing our work on mutual respect and taking a steer from the public, who constantly ask why we just simply can't work together instead of the usual yaboo of previous terms. Fellow councillors, we have a choice. We owe it to those that have entrusted us with this office to work progressively together. Apologies if this speech has lacked my uh, usual humour. Uh, the humour is still there but it's tempered with the enormity of the task we now face. We have a number of services that desperately need attention, such as how we carry out our pothole works. Sorry, guys. This subject may be old hat and boring to some, been there, done that, but that's the problem. We are there and we haven't done it. Our council's current system is far too centralised, and as a councillor, you simply have to speak to two or three different people with at least two different reference numbers to get a message to the local area manager, when in the inefficient former times as a councillor, you could simply speak to them directly. I will, Chair, with your indulgence, give you a quick cycling story, because we've had some of those today. When I was first elected in 2009 to Suffolk County Council, I remember delivering leaflets on a gorgeous sunny evening. And I had had a pint locally doing my bit for the local brewery economy, Matthew. Uh, they didn't need the advertising. We, and I came herring round a bend on my bicycle and I hit a pothole and I went completely over the handlebars. The leaflets went all over the road. I skinned all my elbows and I looked around to see if anyone had seen and there was a little house on the corner and the bedroom window opened and the person shouted out the window, if we had a decent county councillor, he'd have fixed that pothole. Uh, so it just shows it's, it's an incredibly high issue. But potholes are a small issue in the grand scheme of things. We have to take people on a journey to reconstruct our economy in order to fundamentally reduce our impact on our shared ecology. We simply must not fail. We simply do not have the luxury of time anymore. 20, 2030 is just around the corner, which means the room for error in our future decisions is evaporating quicker than the Caspian Sea. But the room for optimism is never better. Our communities have shown how we can rethink our priorities in light of changing circumstances, how we've revalued what's most important to us, health, family, local environment, changing work-life balance. All are reasons for optimism that we can rise to any challenge if we work together. So we extend an offer to the administration. Please use our energy and talent to make a full contribution for the better of Suffolk. Treat us and the Suffolk people with due respect and we will work with you. And when you do the right thing, such as better broadband rollout, such as bringing more SEND provision back into Suffolk, we will tell you. But if you exclude us or the people of Suffolk are sold short and your promises turn out to be hollow, we will tell the world. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor String. Almost bang on seven minutes there. Thank you very much. I now invite a response on behalf of the Labour Group from Councillor Sandy Martin. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And uh, can I add my congratulations to you for your installation as our Chairman for the coming year? Yesterday morning, I had my second coronavirus injection. And I'm glad to say that I have suffered no ill effects whatsoever, as was the case with the first injection, and as is the case with the vast majority of people, as I understand. Unfortunately, a small minority of people do suffer some ill effects, and in a few cases, as is the case with the Labour Group's leader, Sarah Adams, those effects can be debilitating and protracted over several days. 
I spoke to Sarah this morning and she would like you to know that she is still pleased and proud to have been vaccinated. She fully recognises that she is now far safer than she would have been without having had the injection and she would urge everyone else to have the vaccination if they've not yet done so to protect their health and also the health of others. And, and I would like to take this opportunity to add the thanks of the Labour Group to all those, and especially the staff of this authority, that have worked so hard to protect the people of this county. Mr Chairman, while I am delighted to be now representing the people of Rushmere Division in Ipswich at this council, it gives me no great pleasure to be speaking to you all under the current political circumstances. When I was first elected to this council in 1997, we controlled the council alongside the Liberal Democrats, and I believe that between us, we transformed Suffolk for the better. We radically raised educational attainment, made the roads safer for pedestrians and cyclists as well as for motorists, retained a high quality in-house care sector as a benchmark for the private sector, built libraries and children's centres and new schools, introduced the best recycling system in the country at that time, all of which culminated in Suffolk winning the Local Government Chronicle Council of the Year Award in 2001. I wish that there was a Labour councillor sitting in Councillor Hicks's seat. Why wouldn't I? We will remain true to our beliefs, and that includes our belief that Suffolk would be better off with a Labour-led council. Clearly, we have a way to go to convince the voters of Suffolk of that. <laughs> but we're certainly not going to ditch our principles. And we will use those principles to inform our words and actions over the coming four years. We may not be happy to be the third party in this place, but we are still confident that that third party role is an important and valuable one, which we will play to the best of our ability. Where we consider the administration to be right, we will support them, even if the other opposition parties do not. Councillor Newman will remember the joint amendment which he and I proposed to the UKIP wrecking motion on the lowest off third crossing. We worked with the Conservatives then, and we will do so again when it is an issue which we believe in. Conversely, we will work with the other opposition parties whenever they have a valid criticism of the administration. And we will not hesitate to criticise what we believe to be bad practice from the administration, even if the other opposition parties do not agree. We're looking forward to fulfilling our role on this council. I believe this council will be stronger for having effective opposition, and who knows, maybe in four years' time, the situation will be reversed. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Martin. That concludes Agenda Item 9, ladies and gentlemen. We now move on to Agenda Item 10. Agenda Item 10 is a report by the Deputy Chief Executive, and I call on Councillor Matthew Hicks to move the recommendation. Councillor Hicks, you have five minutes, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Uh, well, Agenda Item number 10 is the appointment of committee and chairman. Uh, this paper details um, the number of seats on committees that are calculated following the rules of political proportionality. Uh, Appendix 3 that has been circulated and is on your tables shows the names allocated to committees by each political group and the recommendations of the chairman for each committee. So I recommend that Council agrees the number of seats as indicated in Appendices 1 and 2 on pages 36 and 7 of your paper and the appointment of chairman and members of the committees as detailed in Appendix 3. Again, hard copies are on your desks. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Hicks. Do you have a seconder, please? I do. Councillor Out, do you wish to speak now, or would you like to reserve your right and your, your reserve the right until later? Thank you. You reserve the right. Thank you very much. Councillor Andrew Stringer, spokesperson for the opposition. You can speak for five minutes at this time during the debate. Thank you, Chair. I uh, won't need five minutes. Just to say, 
uh, on this, we, we won't be supporting the, the motion uh, for item 10 because we believed the uh, administration should fully embrace scrutiny in the way other councils do and actually give the chairmanship of that to the opposition parties. Uh, you know, embracing of scrutiny is a, is a well-known uh, uh, form of, of checks and balances on, on local government and, and strong administrations embrace that. So uh, on, on that, on item 10, I'm afraid we, we don't concur, but we will we will not concur in the spirit of comradeship and friendship. We won't fall out about it. But I personally will not be voting for item 10 in its current form. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Stringer. I will now open the debate. If you wish to speak, please signal that you wish to do so and wait for confirmation that your signal has been received uh, by the monitoring officer. Each speaker in the debate has up to three minutes. Please wait until you are called before approaching a lectern. Do I have Councillor Martin has his hand up, please, yes, and Councillor Lindsay will follow him. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll be very brief. Uh, I believe that the principle uh, adumbrated by Councillor Stringer is a very sound one. It's certainly the principle that is followed by Ipswich Borough Council, and on that basis we will be supporting the Green and Liberal Democrat opposition. Thank you very much. Councillor Lindsay, next, please, if you will move to elect her. Thank you, Chair. Um, just for new members, really, just to, make, just to clarify our position, most councils with scrutiny committee, uh, all the cabinet is conservative, uh, the majority of the, of, the, of the council is conservative, so it's the right thing to do to have a member of the opposition chairing the two scrutiny committees that we have. Um, but this council uh, and this council, conservative administration, chooses to put Conservatives uh, chairing those two scrutiny committees. Uh, that's why we're voting against this proposal. Thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor Lindsay. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak, please? Please raise your hand high if you have intention to speak. I see no more hands, so I come back to Councillor Rout. Um, you have your, reserved your right to speak. Would you now like to speak a second? Nothing to add. Councillor Hicks, as proposer of the motion, do you have anything further to add? See, or wish the council agree this recommendation by general affirmation, or shall we move to a vote by a show of hands? Request for a vote. Okay, thank you very much. Those who wish to support the motion, will you please raise your hand? And keep it raised until the monitor officer has finished counting. Those who wish to vote against the motion, please will you raise your hands and keep them raised until the monitor officer has counted. Hey, are there any councillors who would like to abstain in this vote? I can see no hands raised at all there. Do you agree, Monitor Officer? In that case, I have to tell you the recommendation is carried and the Monitor Officer will tell us by what proportion. So it's 53 in favour and 18 against. Thank you very much. We'll now move on then to Agenda Item 11, which is also a report by the Deputy Chief Executive. Please note there's an error on page 42 of the agenda back. The table shows a meeting on the 24th of November 2021 of the Pensions Board. Uh, that date will be a meeting of the Pension Fund Committee. So if you'd like to make that amendment, if your um, 
taking that document home to mark up a diary. It's not the Pension Board, it's the Pension Fund Committee. I now call on Councillor Matthew Hicks to move this recommendation. You've got five minutes, Councillor Hicks. Thank you very much. Uh, the programme of meetings, uh, agenda item number 11, this paper details the programme of meetings from June 2021 through to May 2023. And I just wish to assure members that every effort has been made to try and avoid clashes, particularly with the party conference season, the LGA meetings and the CCN conference, as well as school holidays. Uh, the text on, port, on page 40 lists a number of changes to the previously published programme. Uh, I do not propose to refer to all of these, but would just highlight on paragraph 9, uh, which proposes Cabinet to meet on Monday the 20th of June. That's in order to avoid the clash with Suffolk Day, which of course takes place on the 21st of June. Thank you, Mr Chairman, and I, rec I uh, recommend to Council uh, the programmes as laid out in the paper. Thank you very much, Councillor Hicks. Do we have a seconder, please? Councillor Rout, do you wish to speak now, or would you like to reserve your right? I think we can probably take it from there, I think. Councillor Rout has seconded the motion, doesn't wish to speak. Councillor Andrew Stringer, a spokesperson for the opposition. He has nothing to say. I can now open the debate. If you wish to speak, please signal that you wish to do so and wait for confirmation that your signal has been received by the monitoring officer. Each speaker in the debate has up to three minutes. Please wait until you're called before approaching a lectern. Is there any councillor who would like to speak, please? I can see Councillor Finch, I think. Yes. Councillor Finch? Yes, please. If you'd like to make your way to a... I wasn't intending to speak, Mr Chairman, but I think we should give our thanks to our democratic services team for working out this calendar, which is a, a real difficult challenge, and I think it's always done most effectively, and I'd like to, you to thank them uh, in a normal way. Thank you very much. I would certainly like to second that. Um, any other councillors wishing to speak, please, on this topic? No? In that case, Councillor Hicks, do you have anything to add? Nothing further to add, Mr Chairman. OK. Unless any, any councillor indicates otherwise, I would take it the council is content to agree these recommendations subject to the amendment of the, of the um, date on page 42 by general affirmation. Agreed. Are there any objections to that, please? I see no hands raised at all, so that is carried. Now, moving on to agenda item 12. Another report by the Deputy Chief Executive, and I call on Councillor Matthew Hicks to once again move the recommendation. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. This is appointment to outside bodies, agenda item number 12, and this paper details three different categories for appointments to outside bodies. The paper on your tables includes the recommendation of category A appointments. Uh, category B and Cs will be allocated in accordance with the procedures as laid out in paragraph 9, Democratic services will be in touch in the near future, contacting relevant councillors uh, to ask you to come forward if you are of interest. So I recommend that council agrees the category A appointments as tables and the procedure for appointing B and C categories as detailed. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Do you have a seconder, please? Councillor Richard Rout, do you wish to speak now or reserve your right? Thank you very much, Councillor Stringer. As spokesperson for the opposition, would you like to speak? I'll now open the debate. If you wish to speak, please signal that you wish to do so. Wait for your signal to be received by the monitoring officer. Each speaker in the debate will have up to three minutes, and I'm going to invite Councillor Richard Smith to speak, please. Chairman, I apologise for prolonging uh, the debate on this last item. My comments will be no more than 30 seconds, and they cover two very small errors in this paper. Uh, and I draw them to your attention because they both occur under my name. The first one is on page three. The second item down, the Driver Offender Retraining Governance Board should be DORG, D-O-R-G, not DROG. And the second uh, slight error, is on page five, four items up from the bottom, local government association, new leaf. 
Now, I've been honoured to be the County Council's representative on New Leaf for 10 years and indeed chaired that organisation for three years. But it does not have a hyphen in it. And I did mention this four years ago, and it still has a hyphen in it, despite me drawing that att uh, attention to that. It should actually uh, read New Leaf, the Nuclear Legacy Advisory Forum, special interest group of the LGA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Does any other councillor wish to speak on this issue, please, on this paper? Well, I'm afraid, councillors, I have an issue which I would like to bring on this paper. It's actually on page 57. It's the second entry down on there, the Port of Felixstowe Liaison Committee. Um, in the um, far column where the officer is nominated, it says democratic services. Um, actually, the Port of Felixstowe would quite like it if they had a senior official from the County Council uh, nominated for that position so they can be invited to local authority liaison committee meetings. So could I ask for that to please be resolved? Thank you very much. Councillor Hicks, do you have any further things to add? I have nothing further to add, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, I think unless any councillor indicates otherwise, I will take it that council is content to agree these recommendations uh, by general affirmation. Agreed. Are there any councillors against, please? No? Right. That is therefore carried. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. This concludes the business for today's meeting, and I now officially close it at 15.46. In the interests of COVID safety, please leave the meeting promptly and in accordance with the instructions from the Democratic Services staff. Please do not stop to congregate with other members, and please also ensure that you take all your belongings and any rubbish with you. Um, obviously, this is somebody else's property. We don't want to leave uh, any rubbish behind for them. I wish you all a safe journey home and look forward to seeing you at the next meeting of the Council, which I think is on July the 8th. Yes? Thank you very much. <laughs>